Logan Maida, and uh, we're going to be discussing modern metal production in general, and then we're going to be talking about the production on the Gajira album, uh, The Way of All Flesh. Um, as a lot of you will know, Logan has had a musician background um, within the, the metal music scene, so obviously it was in Machine Head, Soulfly and Medication, but since then has produced many bands, including Fear Factory, uh, Five Finger Death Punch, Devil Driver, uh, Gajira, who we'll be uh, talking about especially. What are you, what's your approach when, during pre-production, to click tracks? I like to start pre-production with, with the MIDI drums, just for the creative benefits yeah. uh, and easily arrange and uh, even I do a lot of co-writing mm -hmm. um, so yeah and finding the right tempos building the tempo maps before you go into to mic a kit and take the time to do the drums is to really know where you're going so. sure more times than not I'm doing the drums last these days really the very last thing I do is drums wow because the song is fully realized, you know where you're going, and it's just, it makes more sense. When it comes to tuning the drums, um, getting the sound right at source, um, have you got any thoughts or your preferred method for tuning drums just to keep the drums really tight? It's really, really important to have, first of all, good drums, good cymbals, but yeah. tuning, um, I use Angel City Drumworks, um, John or one of his other guys over there, and I have them in every day to right. get the tuning right and maintain it. Um, because most drummers don't know fuck all about no. tuning their drum kits. So. Sure. I've used Ross quite a few times. He's very expensive, but he's really, really good. Yeah. Um, but Angel City's good. Yeah, John, uh, he's he's really good. But uh, I won't track drums without a real drum tuner. What's your approach to miking up the kick drum? How many mics do you generally tend to use? I've been using a D6 inside, like halfway in, six to ten inches away from the beater. Off axis, sort of like pointing at the contact point at the batter head. Yeah. 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 Okay. And do you combine that with another mic? Yeah, I got like a NS10 or subkick yeah. mic on the outside. I like a Fat 47 outside. Um, I'll often like put a Beta 52 or a D112 on the hole. Obviously, with the extended cymbal setup with with most metal drummers, with the amount of metal work that they use, um, with sort of quite wide kits, how do you go about miking up the cymbals? Well, just just a good stereo overhead, and then close hat, close right, of course, and then you get like bands like Devil Driver or Gojira with a lot of splash stuff. I'll put close mics on right. the splashes. I don't want to hear those splash mics ever no. <laughs> unless he's doing like a thing and I'll just sure. automate that moment sure. and I have it really clear. That's the thing about live drums is the room, you know, that's, that's the organic energy and I love a good room. And um, I use as much room mic as possible. It's, it's part of the snare sound, the organic, you know, size. So a big wide stereo room with like Sony C500s or even some ribbon mics or something and put them up high, make them like, just find a spot depending on the room like, and make them look at a piece of glass way over high sure. up and opposite then. So you, have, you tend to have them quite high, do you? The, yeah, it depends on the room, but yeah. Right. I put MIDI information on every kick drum, tab to transients like this. Yeah. And it it's sucks. The most accurate way. Oh, oh, yeah. It takes time though, doesn't it? Well, I do it pretty fast, but I have an assistant too. That right. Can... So when you're doing tap to transient, do you have different dynamic range within the snare samples that you implement? I'll write it in on the MIDI. Right. And then I can easily, you know, change the sound of the samples that I want to use later instead of like putting audio in. What's uh, your approach with recording bass? I usually get a clean DI, a little yeah. compression on it, um, and an ash down head, put a 421 on a cab, or, or an SVT, put a 421 on an SVT cab. It's yeah. always good. And then uh, I've got some good profiles in my Kemper, and I use I blend as a secondary DI with some dirt on it. Do you prefer quad track or double track guitars? Quad. Quad. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as, as much as I, <laughs> you know, would like to get it done quicker, uh, yeah. it's just it always sounds better, and it's got to be super fucking tight. But it's like that's the sound. That's how. That's how I, you know, from Machine Head Records. That's what we did, and yeah. just like you know. You did it all on tape too. Sure. Do you? What, what's your approach to? Do you vary the tones between takes? No. Uh, there's there's sometimes where I'll have a pair of one tone and a pair of another tone, but normally it's just four of the tone, right. just to beef it up. Right. Okay. Get a little bit of a chorusy thickness. And Single mic or double mic? Fifty-seven and four twenty-one. Less gain, but you yeah. gotta have a player that knows how to fucking hit the strings. You yeah. know, it's like. 
kids. Some yeah. kids, they like they get all the power out of their head and their amp, and they gain it. So but they pick like you know super light, and yep. that doesn't sound good. You got to really have the velocity and and, and dig in, and yep. that's where you can get the aggression and not need a lot of gain yep. and have a good note, you know, definition. Yeah.